Challenges are the number one most effective online marketing strategy today. And if you are not doing challenges, I'm telling you, you are missing out. I mean, every entrepreneur today is marketing themselves online. So regardless of how you're marketing yourself, whether you've got a webinar, you've got a VSL, you've got other stuff converting. If you don't have a challenge funnel, you are missing out. And you could be wasting a lot of time when you could really simplify things and get them going. So this is Marisa Murgatory. I've made over $20 million with online courses and programs. And I've got with me here today, Pedro Adao. And Pedro has actually done 47 profitable challenges in a row. And the last challenge he did brought in 65,000 opt-ins and over a million dollars in sales. So he knows a thing or two about how to get challenges going. And this is the only strategy that he's using to build his online business empire. Seriously, he has no webinars. He has no tripwires. He's got nothing else but challenges. So Pedro, can you let us know a little bit about how you got started with challenges? And then we're going to go over three specific things on this video. We're going to teach you how to come up with your challenge hook. We're going to tell you how to run a challenge and we're going to tell you how to fill your challenge. So Pedro, how in the world did you get started being the challenge king? Yeah, it's great. It's an awesome story. I mean, like so many things in entrepreneurship, Marisa, like I never set out to be the challenge guy. I just, um, I was actually, I read a book called Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. And in that book, he talked about this thing called a masterclass. And he talked about using a masterclass, a free masterclass, just to, to share information with a, an audience. You may be testing, testing niches, testing audiences. And at that time, this is about, this goes back to like May of 2018. I just really felt led to begin sharing about things I had learned in my journey as a faith-based entrepreneur. Um, I found some, I fell in some pretty big ditches trying to figure that out, overcame those things. I've been quite successful uh, building my brick and mortar uh, financial services practice. And so I did a free 30 day masterclass, just teaching what I knew, but I, but I innovated and I was doing some, I was doing kind of, I was doing some things that weren't in the book. Obviously I was adding in Facebook and lives and, I made it really social. I'm a social guy. I added some really, a lot of community building into it. And um, my goal was never to launch a program. My goal was to do this like a little passion project, train for 30 days, and then it was going to be over. And literally the, the, the people I was serving, they're like, no, like you must make it. We want to stay together. Like, please create a program for us. Like they were like, you're our mentor now. Like you can't leave us. And so I ended up launching a, a, a program in a company called 100X. And then I was like, well, that worked really well. So I, you know, unlike a lot of entrepreneurs, something works really well and they never do it again. Well, that wasn't me. Like I had success doing what was called a masterclass. Looking back now, it was just a challenge. It was a free challenge. And I just kept running them over and over and over and over. And then you do something long enough, you become great at it. And then I was able to help out uh, Dean Graziosi uh, people like Roland Frazier, Pete Vargas, and other pretty prolific entrepreneurs with their challenges. And then, you know, before we, before I knew it, people were saying, Pedro, you're, you've got something special here. You've got to create a program and share it with the industry. And then last year, you know, it was, gosh, May of 2019, we launched our signature program, Crush It With Challenges. Now I'm the challenge guy. And this challenge framework, Marisa, has taken over the internet. Like this is the strategy that every single major entrepreneur is using to launch brand new programs, to fill up live events. Tony Robbins himself is using our challenge framework that he learned from Dean to fill up UPW, to fill up all of his entire virtual events. So it's just super humbling that something that I was able to kind of innovate and, and kind of up level is now being used by so many of my mentors. And I'm happy to be with you today. And let's, let's teach some folks, let's share some of my challenge secrets with your audience. Awesome. I mean, what a story. I think that just goes to show that you follow your instinct, you follow your path. You do something that's aligned with your gifts and superpowers, you being social, you being a community builder, and then look at what can happen with just a core idea and following intuition. And then of course, getting more and more strategic in doubling down when something works versus going after the next shiny object. So let's talk first about really coming up with your challenge hook, that big idea, that topic that's going to drive the challenge, because this is kind of where people either make it or break 
take it because the wrong hook will mean no opt-ins, no engagement, and not the results that you want. But the right hook means people are just going to be signing up and sharing it with everybody they know. So how do you approach going about creating that hook, that big idea that's just going to get the people that you want and help you stand out and no matter what's happening online? Yeah, so great. And this is absolutely a kind of a it, it really is kind of make or break because even if you run the strategy flawlessly and you do all that, you execute it well, the, the hook is what's going to get people to opt in and join and not just join, but also show up. Now everyone that opts in shows up. So if you want to get, if you want high engagement, then having an awesome challenge idea, the big idea of the hook that we call it is important. And it starts with, it starts with this Maurice, you know, we've, I've been able to, I mean, we've now trained thousands of people in our framework and it starts with, do you know who your ideal customer is? So preferably you have an ideal customer, a customer avatar that you have spent time thinking about. Um, I, it, I can just tell you that this, I believe is, I see so many entrepreneurs struggling to get, to get successfully launched online. And I can, I can pinpoint almost every single time, Marisa, I love your feedback on this, but I think it's because they just haven't niched down enough. They're trying to serve too many people. They're trying to serve, you know, the world, as I say. And so one is if you have a, a very niche down um, ideal customer, and then this becomes so much easier, which is if you have a very specific niche down customer, then I would say, think about the biggest problem they have. What's the biggest problem they have? Or what do they want more than anything? Let's not confuse wants with what do they need. Sometimes as when we become experts, we're like, oh, I know best. I know what my people need. And we don't tend to buy what we need. We know that we need to probably eat less donuts, eat more salads, right? Work out more. Like we know what we need to do to lose weight. And most of us, you know, we want the donut. We want what we want. So I always say this, solve the either the biggest Find the number one most biggest problem that your audience is aware of. Make a challenge around solving that problem, okay? Um, or what do they really want the most? Like what do they really desire above all? And find a way to create that as your big idea in your hook. And, um, and make sure that your challenge is designed around giving them not just information, but giving them, putting them in the process of solving that problem. A well-designed challenge puts your your challengers, the people you're serving, it puts them in action on in, on the way they're already begin solving that problem during the challenge, and um, and so that's why once they're already making progress in the challenge, it's so obvious they want to stay with you and invest in your program, your coaching, whatever your next step is. So um, and now, if you have no idea, Marissa is like, well, Pedro, I don't have a niche, I don't have an item that I'm then I would say then think about what is the biggest problem you can solve? What skill sets do you have? What are you good at? Um, like, and build a challenge around solving a problem. Like my wife doesn't have an avatar, but my wife's an amazing, my wife's an amazing cook. So if she's like, I'm gonna do a seven day amazing meals challenge, she can go live and teach how to make amazing meals seven days in a row. And she may have all kinds of random avatars, but she's clear about the problem that she solves. So I would say that's um, that's kind of my best suggestions on where to look. Or if that all fails, become an affiliate. You know, find a great find a great program or product that you believe in. You can do a challenge and sell affiliate or third party other people's you know products, and that is just um, you know a great way to go as well. So. Absolutely. So I love what you said about really solving a problem and also getting people into action around solving that problem in the challenge, because then they're going to want to continue with you because challenges create something that's super duper powerful. That is perhaps the most powerful marketing known to man, which is not just word of mouth. It creates results in advance. And when people get results in advance, it essentially, you know, dissembles the most, the biggest objection people have, which is, I don't believe that I can do it. 
and you're giving people self-belief one small piece at a time. So let's go a little bit deeper into this idea of a challenge hook and topic by giving us a couple examples of the most kind of viral and exciting challenge hooks that you've come up with your, for yourself. And then I want to talk about one of my challenge hooks as well and have you make it better on the fly. All right. So tell me maybe the three top challenges that you've done, whether it's for yourself or hooks that you've helped come up with for some of your kind of friends and our mutual friends. Okay. So one, I just, I just did, a, I came up with a huge challenge. I just did last month, uh, last, which was January of, uh, 2021. I ran this challenge in January of 2020. And so I have two businesses. I've got one that serves uh, faith-based entrepreneurs and one that just serves, you know, anybody looking at, to prosper and make money online. So this challenge was for my niche serving uh, faith-based entrepreneurs and do you remember all the hype around 2020, brand new year, new decade, 2020, you know, the year of vision. And so my, one of my ideas was what if we kicked off, what if I did a 31 day wisdom challenge? There's a, there, there's an ancient book of wisdom in the Bible called the book of Proverbs it has 31 chapters. So one chapter per day. So I was like, you know what? I think I'll, I, I know, I knew already a lot of my ideal clients are already looking to, you know, spend some time in their Bible, read some, you know, already know about the book of Proverbs. And so I, you know what, let's do a 31 day wisdom challenge or read a chapter of Proverbs a day. But I also thought, what if we had an amazing speaker join me every single day of the challenge? And that's how I kind of came up with for the first time. And didn't even know I was trying, but we now have like, we call like summit style challenges. And that's an example of a summit style challenge where it was every day it was me, a guest interviewing, read a chapter, and that challenge was massively successful. We did it again last month in 2021, and that's the one that did over 65,000 people opted in um, and did over seven figures of revenue promoting our bank and offer. Another one I've done that was really cool was I did a challenge called the Category King Challenge, and that was really based on uh, a book I love called Play Bigger, where it talks about um, why you want to um, create a brand new category, which is, it, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the carving a niche conversation at the next level, which is create a whole new category. Don't just, don't just create a niche within and else, like go make a whole new category. So that way you can I kind of be the number one person in that space because initially you're the only person in that space. So I did a, I did a category King challenge and I interviewed other category Kings. Dean Graziosi was on there. We had JJ Virgin who was a category King in the health in fitness space and I had Damon John category King from obviously fitness and shark. So that was, that was one of my favorite ones. And then of course I've done some really cool ones. Uh, you know, people like Roland Frazier, he has a really cool challenge. I helped him design. It's called the Epic challenge. Epic stands for ethical profits in crisis. And that challenge was all about helping. It was, it, it's, it, it's, it's a five day challenge about helping business owners identify five other really strategic um, acquisition targets, meaning helping entrepreneurs that want to grow in this time, helping them discover five um, really strategic companies they can acquire to build their business with no money out of pocket. Like that was a super cool hook. And Roland's run that challenge, I think six, seven times. And they've, they've you know, served a lot, a lot of people and made millions of dollars with that challenge. So that's just three examples. Cool. Very I'm happy cool. To, I'm, gonna, I'm happy to get you, put me on the spot. All right. I'm going to put you on the spot for sure. So I just ran a challenge, wrapped a five day challenge three days ago, and it was called the jumpstart your business challenge, how to get out of neutral and get your button gear. So essentially the biggest problem that I see with so many of my students is they start working on their business and then they stall out and they get stuck. They lose all their momentum. They join programs and they don't complete them and follow through them. And so I wanted to teach the four inner momentum strategies that when you add them to the outer momentum strategies that you usually use to build your business, you're able to not just gain momentum, but sustain it because you're fueled from the inside out. So I called this the jumpstart your business challenge and I only marketed it to my list internally. And so we had maybe like 2,500 people opt in for it. Not big, but it was kind of a spontaneous thing for us. However, I'm thinking that I could have gotten more creative with the name than jumpstart your business, how to get out of neutral and get your button 
gear. So I thought I'd bring it to you, the Challenge King, to see if you had any ideas for making that better the next time I run it, because the content's great, but we need more people. Yes, and I've, I do have some ideas. Okay, so first thing I would add to it is one thing is um, you could be more specific on who is for. Okay. So I always, so I have in my naming convention, um, Marisa, I, I have a, I have a four part naming convention. Uh, so any, anytime you could do a challenge name or tagline, try and include these four data elements. One is how long is the challenge? You had that one. It was a five day Two, Is it the challenge? Is it free or is it paid? How much is it? Right. That's a good. And then the second thing is what is the big promise, which you had that jump start, but it's a little bit, it's a little, could be a little bit tighter. It's a little vague. And the fourth one is who is this challenge for? Okay. So I think a way to sharpen up the name is instead of, so when you think about jump starting, that's good. But what is the num? If, what would you say is the number one biggest thing that stumbles people from getting, from taking action? I think that it's, um, a lot of times they actually know what to do, but they get confused. They get overwhelmed. They start procrastinating. They lose belief in themselves and they haven't created the habits that they need to really sustain that action over time. So even if they have an idea of what they want to do and they kind of know what they have to do, they're not following through and actually doing it. Yeah. So I agree. And I see the same thing. I think overthinking is one of the things I hear the most. So a five day overcoming overthinking challenge, I think is sharper because, you know, it speaks to the pain point. And then what you can do is the tagline could be right. Um, can really talk about how to you know how to how to jumpstart your tw- business in twenty twenty one, for or how to jumpstart your online business in twenty twenty one for insert ideal avatar. Which you could put for brand new course creators, right? Nice. Or you could insert for early stage entrepreneurs. So now all of a sudden, it's not about jumpstarting; it's about overcoming overthinking, which by the way, a lot of people do. And we also know this is for, this is, this is for early stage entrepreneurs who are looking to launch a course. And that's who you serve. You serve course creators, right? So I think just those little tweaks, all of a sudden, boom, now it's way tighter, crisper, clearer. What am I going to get? It goes back to like, everyone's busy, right guys? So it's like, what if, what this, this challenge name and title has to grab someone by the shirt and pull them in and be like, Hey, this is for you. And so, so trying to give them more of those triggers, you know? Um, and I think, I think that would be a, um, a quick improvement. I, of course, the more I think about it, I come up with some other ones, but do you like those? Do you like those ideas? Yeah, I like the idea. I'm wondering about stop o- overthinking instead of overcoming overthinking, just as a shorter stop overthinking challenge, the five day or stop overthinking and get your button gear challenge. I don't know if that's too long. Yeah. Well, overcoming overthinking is two words. Yeah. Right? yeah. Overcome the over the five day or you can even skip it on. Overcoming the overcoming overthinking challenge. Well, it's fun because it's kind of got the over over. I'm over overthinking. Get over over or it could also be get over overthinking challenge. Yeah, that's an idea. Or you could take, if it was procrastination, you could take the, you can use, you know, how to, um, it would be a procrastin, it would be around how to end or stop procrastinating. But I would just find, because again, jumpstart, it's just a little, it's, it's a little vague. You know I mean, we kind of know what it means, but there's a, there's a, there's a more, there's a more sniper approach. That's kind of more of a shotgun approach. That's more of a sniper approach. But look, here's the, here's a cool thing you learned. That was that went to your list. Yeah. So if you have an email list of people who already know you, like you, trust you, they're fans of your work, you don't really have to agonize over the hook because you're not running cold traffic. I I I I don't I, I think if you're running cold traffic to that, you would have been like, oh man, like why these conversions aren't amazing potentially. But again, you have you've graded what you do, Marie. So like people know that you're amazing at helping people create and launch courses. So that you, so you still might have been okay with that challenge name because of who you are, but anybody without as much credibility in the space, that challenge name or tagline probably wouldn't have converted, which is why you don't want to look and model challenge names that bigger celebrity entrepreneurs are doing, right? So for example, you know, Tony Robbins and Dean just did a, uh, the new world, new you challenge. 
okay? They had like 800,000 people in it. Guys, I would, if any one of my students or, you know, coaching clients, and they wanted to do the new world, new you challenge, I'd be like, that's a horrible name. Don't do it. It's too vague. It's too broad. Like, but Tony Robbins and Dean can pull that off because they're, they're at the top of the funnel, right? That's that we, Tony Robbins established as a clear industry expert when it comes to motivation, inspiration, and, and personal growth. So a challenge name like that, Tony and Dean crushed it. And anybody else that would, that would probably, you know, never convert for it. So don't get tricked by what you see some of the, you know, different entrepreneurs, because sometimes they can pull off a challenge name that if you try and model it or copy it, it would flop. I totally agree. I tell my students that all the time, do not model yourself after the early greats because they can still get away with kind of bad marketing, honestly, because they are who they are. But anyone coming up now has to have much sharper, sharper, tighter marketing to really make that happen. So let's go on to kind of part two of this, which is how do you market and fill your challenge? Then we'll come back to the running of the challenge. So once you got the hook, you want to market it and then you're going to run it. So let's talk about how to market and fill your challenge, the different ways to do that. And then we'll come back to running the challenge at okay. the very end. So assuming you got this hook dialed in, you got this big idea dialed in, then it's kind of time to turn on the marketing machine and fill this with as many you know, hearts and minds as you possibly can because that gives you a bigger audience and challenges are so good at growing your audience. So how do you fill them? How do you go about marketing these guys? Yeah, so good. So there's basically two types of traffic, right? There's basically paid traffic right and then there's organic traffic and so and then of course you have an email list if you have one right so it's kind of like either you're paying for ads or you're getting organic reach on platforms or you're emailing your list that's pretty much all there is so i i just because of this challenge framework i was able because well, because of one i carved a really tight niche um really good at what i do and um the challenge framework, I was able to run paid ads from day one, okay? Which I know is not normal. Like, I know that's, I wanna be honest about that. Like, I was able to do something from day one that's usually not feasible. I do think with our challenge framework, a lot more people can actually do this and convert cold traffic with a hot challenge name. I've seen many of my students do that. So one is if you have a hot challenge name and you have a very well-defined ideal, you know, client, you can run Facebook, Instagram ads and run paid traffic and, and convert it. Even if, like when I launched in May of 18, Marisa, I had no list. I had no name. I was a financial planner living in obscurity. I had no, I had no students. I had no testimonials. I'm literally zero. So what's nice about challenges is, you know, they create so much social proof. And so just running them creates that. So one is paid traffic, Facebook, Instagram, obviously YouTube and the Google display network. Those are the four places that we're running our paid traffic. Organic traffic, it could be as simple as get your phone out, go live, go live on Facebook. Hey guys, I'm doing the five day, five pound Corona weight loss challenge and I'm here to help you lose five pounds in the past five days. Maybe you're like me and you put on a few pounds during Corona and I wanted to drop five pounds quick before the weekend, before Valentine's Day. So let's do the five pound you know, uh, Valentine's Day weight loss challenge. And uh, hey, if you wanna lose five pounds with me, just leave a comment, just say I'm in and, I, and I'll and i send you a DM. You can literally do a live. Hey, if you can share this post, tag some friends who might wanna lose five pounds with us this week. Simple, you go live, you go live on Facebook, go live on Instagram, old school. You can text somebody, hey, I'm doing a challenge, you wanna join? Text them a link. And what link do you text them? I'll, I'll, we'll cover that in the run next. But, and then guys right now, Clubhouse. Clubhouse, we're making this video, you know, it's February 15th, we're shooting this thing, 2021. Clubhouse is this insane new app that's going crazy right now. And it, it, it really seems like it's one of the only places where you're still seeing true organic reach happening. And so if you have a topic, if you have a topic that you are passionate about, you can literally go make a room on that topic and then just give value, give value, ask, and then just every once in a while, plug your free challenge. And literally, you can literally fill up a challenge right now in Clubhouse 
or you can get in other people's rooms on the topic and like so lots of lots of organic i think right now clubhouse is the best place for organic i've ever seen and then of course if you have an email list i mean marisa said hey i didn't run ads had an email list i wanted to do a challenge and so she emailed her list and boom ran the challenge very quickly so that's how you fill up your challenge it's it's no no real mystery there and again your hook is going to determine how you can spend a million bucks on ads. If you have a horrible hook, it you're going to probably waste money. But an amazing hook means that you're going to get ad, you're going to get cheaper conversions because you're just, it's a better marketing. It's a better hook. It's a better, it's a, it's the right challenge for the right audience. And, and uh, that's how you really get a, that's how you really scale paid traffic is you got to get those things dialed in. Absolutely. And yeah, the hook is so, so important for getting the traffic, whether that's paid traffic or organic traffic, because that's got the, the thing that makes people say, Ooh, I want that. I want to attend this. I want to do this. So that brings us to the third part of this session, which is all about running your challenge. So assuming you got your hook, you got the marketing, people have joined this thing. Now, how do you run it? And before we do that, I just wanted to say that I wanted to make sure that you can hook up with Pedro after this video is over. And he's put together a little gift for you over at challengesecrets.com forward slash Marisa, M-A-R-I-S-A. And if you go there, I mean, this is your secrets from running 47 back-to-back -back profitable challenges in like two years or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anything else you want to say about that? Yeah, I mean, guys, we've done 47 profitable challenges in a row. We, I've trained thousands of students in our core offer. We have the only mastermind on the planet for challenges. Um, I've been behind some of the biggest challenges online right now. And literally, I took some of my best secrets and put them in this, in this free training. It's absolutely free. Um, Challengesecrets.com forward slash Marisa is where you can grab that. And it's going to be, it's going to take this conversation, that next step and give you some uh, really actionable, actual information on how you can really, you know, if, if you want to, and, it, it, and if you are so motivated, which I hope you are, you probably actually launch your very first or next challenge just based off this interview and that free training. Sweet, and remember my name's M-A-R-I-S-A, one, one R, one S. So challengesecrets.com forward slash Marisa. Okay, so now that you got your hook, you have a sense of how you're gonna fill this challenge. Now let's talk about running the challenge, right? And how you can go about running it. So Pedro, how do you get started? I mean, I assume that if you're marketing it, you're sending people to some kind of pages and that's kind of the start of your challenge, correct? It is, but it can even be simpler than that. So I know so much of, our, uh, the, of, of the people looking to get started online today are kind of tech challenge, right? So guys, like, can, let me just tell you a very simple, low tech way to run a challenge. I just made up this five day, you know, five day, five pound Corona weight loss challenge. Let's get fit before Valentine's day. Made that up from scratch. I just gave you a little script. You go live on your phone. And all you need to do a challenge is a smartphone, a Facebook account, and you can make a private Facebook group for your challenge. You can call it Pedro's five day five pound Valentine weight loss challenge. Absolutely free. So then when you go live on Facebook or Instagram and you're like, Hey, if this is for you, you want to join me, leave a comment below. They comment and you can just DM them or even easier. You can go into the Facebook live itself after it's done. Once you're done with your live, you can edit the post. You can edit the post and then you can put the link right in the post. You can put the link to that private Facebook group. And then once you have the Facebook group created, you can add some little basic questions. Tell me your name. What is your email address? Hey, what is, what is your, do you have any overall weight loss or fitness goals? You can ask three questions. Now you're surveying them. You can grab that information, throw it into a spreadsheet. And now you're building your very, you're starting off building your, your first email list. You're getting some good information from people. And this is all free. You're already on your phone. You already paid for that. Facebook is free. The Facebook group is free. No funnels, no ads, and you can do your first challenge. And if you want, you can even make it a paid challenge. You can say, hey, guys, it's a five-day, five-pound challenge, only $5. DM me if you're interested, and you can send them your PayPal link. 
You can DM a Cash App link. You can DM them a Venmo link. I know it's a little bit, you know, maybe it's not super high tech, but it's effective. And you can even do your first basic paid challenge with no technology whatsoever. But obviously, if you're looking to really crush it like we've done and do five figures, six figures, seven, even eight figures in challenges, then you're going to want to use a challenge funnel. Okay. Um, we use ClickFunnels. I've got amazing templates already pre-built out in ClickFunnels that we give to our customers. Um, and so, but any funnel builder will do. You can do this in, you know, Kajabi or Thinkific, WordPress. I mean, pretty much any, any funnel builder will do. But we've got proven templates that we know have converted literally tens and twenties and thirties and millions of revenue. So you have your chat, you, you can send them to your challenge funnel. And then once they opt into your funnel, then, then on the thank you page, you put the link to that private Facebook group. And so if you're doing a funnel, obviously you want to grab their email address, build your email list. Maybe you want to sell them something while they're there. You can make them a very nice low ticket kind of offer. So when we've done, Marisa, we use the challenge funnel. The reason why the challenges are so powerful is I've used my challenge funnel to accomplish every single marketing objective at the same time. My challenge funnel page one is my opt-in page. That's my list builder. We built an email list of over 200,000 people on email just promoting our challenges. What's page two? We're gonna make them a nice little low ticket upsell. That's my tripwire. I built it into the challenge. So I'm gonna sell them a $17 something or a $37 something or a $97 something. So we're creating, we have that tripwire effect, creating, turning leads into buyers right up front. And then of course, once you're running your challenge, it's a five day challenge on day four. What are you doing on day four? You're making a sales presentation. You're making a webinar to promote your program or service. There's the webinar. And then the whole time, what are you doing? You're sending them emails to get them to show up. And then once the offer's made, you're gonna email them and get them to buy. So the challenge framework, the reason why it's so powerful, the reason why, guys, we've been able to become an eight figure business in our second full year is because this one marketing strategy helps you accomplish every single other marketing objective at the same time. And, and you can start it with as simple as just a phone and a private Facebook group, make your first couple thousand dollars that way and then you kind of can just take it from there. Wow, that's amazing. And so the other thing that I wanted to talk about when it comes to running the challenge, and I can't believe how quickly you've just gone from not even being in this game to just being at the top of this game. I mean, you've done in two years what it takes most people five to 10 years to do, and that's seriously, seriously impressive. And you've done it all on the backs of challenges. That's it. So you clearly are the challenge king. But let's talk about the different kinds of challenges because the first type is either free challenge or paid challenge. But there's a couple different summit, I mean, not summit, challenge models. One of them is you're just the sole speaker presenting training. That's common for a five-day challenge. But you do a lot of these 30, 31-day challenges that's more of almost like a summit challenge model with a lot of guests. So can you talk about the different kinds of challenges people People can run yeah so um, a challenge either is free or it's paid and of course if it's free you're gonna get more opt-ins you'll have more people signing up if it's paid if there's a price tag on it fewer people will sign up and join but what you do know is everyone who's there really wants to be there because they, they spent the 17 27 37 97 dollars to be there um, we used to only do paid challenges Marisa until Corona hit. And when Corona hit in March of 2020 was the first time I ever did a full blown free challenge. And now like that free challenge model is taken over because they're so darn effective. So either free or it's paid. And let me tell you this guys, don't just go for numbers. If you're brand new with this, it might be smarter to have a paid challenge with smaller numbers of people in it, but have better, more responsive, more engaged people in it, then have this huge challenge with a bunch of free people, that may just be more stress than you're ready for at this point. So um, I do love paid challenges and we will be going back to paid challenges this year for sure. The other thing to think about is um, with your challenge 
is, um, you know, how advanced do you want to be? You can do a low tech challenge with a phone and a Facebook group, or you can really crank up the technology, have a very, have a full blown funnel with, you know, multiple upsells. And obviously you can have a, and then your ad campaign can be a simple Facebook ad, or you can do Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and retargeting. And so that's kind of a distinction. And then, um, and then the last thing you talked about was guests. So I, my first time, my first challenge is I ran two and a half, two and a half years ago. I had no guests because I didn't know any, I had no, I didn't have guests to bring on. No one knew me. I didn't know them. It was just me training. So here's the beauty of that. The beauty of you training is they connect to you and that's who you want them connecting to. So like at the end of the day, you're doing this to build community, to build, establish culture, prove how much you care, show, and, and then show how much, you know, like, so like, um, you don't want to have, depending on what you're selling and, and the hook of the challenge, you may not want to have any guests. Most of my early challenges had no guests and they were mega effective. Now, sometimes adding in a guest or two can add a nice flavor, especially if they're a bigger name, they have a bigger name than you. You can, you can leverage the fact that they've got more followers, a bigger platform. And many of these people will come on your challenge for free because they want the exposure. And so what happens there is you can leverage someone else's brand, their other name, you can then, you know, get additional, you can then get discovered by their audience, right? And also what's great about having a guest or two is if you bring that guest on on day five, in, in our framework on day four, you make the offer, you extend the invitation. Well, on day five, how awesome it is to bring on a guest speaker, someone that is respected, and then they can turn around and they can basically edify you and your offer and they can, in a sense, repitch your offer to the audience. And it's so much nicer when someone else has great things about you than you say about yourself, right? So I, I love I love having a guest or two nowadays, mostly for just, you know, they could bring an extra, they could bring some variety. You know, Marisa, like you can't be boring. That's the cardinal sin of marketing and is you can't be boring. So sometimes having guests can spice it up. And then of course the, the full blown you know, summit is now you have a guest or two every single day. And now it's really about having this huge, you know, list of a ton of speakers. And um, I've done, I've done that now twice now and uh, they're fun and they're really good. They're fun. Um, it's, it's a great way to just serve your audience with a lot of new people and new speakers. It's a great way to make some cool connections with, for down things down the road. The only challenge, cautionary note I would give on that is you have to, you have to be, it has to be a very tight hook to keep momentum because if you're having a different speaker every day or two or three speakers, it could feel a little bit, it can kind of feel like it's all over the place because you have so many voices, so many different people sharing stuff. So you have to have a very tight through line to keep the challenge building momentum so it doesn't feel like it's, so you don't want your challenge to feel like 50 random YouTube videos spliced together, right? That would, that's not what we're going for. So hopefully that helped, Marisa. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So we just covered three things with Pedro Adao, the challenge king. We covered how to find your big idea for your challenge, how to market and fill your challenge, and how to run your challenge once you got people in it and even set it up to get the most amount of people possible. And he's got a gift for you over at challengesecrets.com forward slash Marisa if you want to go even deeper into challenge. But I recommend that you hang out on YouTube for a little bit longer. And I've got some other videos that you may be very interested in. I've got the essentials for running an online business, really the life of an entrepreneur. So if you're just getting started and figuring out what you're even doing, you wanna watch that one first. And also the seven simple steps to create your personal brand because the more you got a personal brand, the more people are gonna be attracted to your challenges so you can leverage these strategies even 
further. So check out those videos, check out Pedro's gift, and thank you so much, Pedro, for being such an awesome guest, and you really know your stuff when it comes to challenges. Awesome, man, it was so fun hanging out with you, Marisa. Thanks for the invitation. Absolutely.